Hi folks, uh, welcome to our Friday evening, late evening office. Uh, you're very welcome uh, joining us this evening. Um, do you ever wonder whenever you go out of the house uh, whether the rain is just holding back until uh, you literally walk out through the door and then it feels as though the, heaven, the heavens literally open? Um, but that's what's just happened to me as I came across from the house. Um, I just got a complete soaking. Um, Wherever you are today, I hope you are well. It's been lovely today, actually, um, just phoning around some of you, um, just uh, having the opportunity to chat to, to, to some of you and how uh, this time together that we have each evening um, it is a time uh, of peace, of God's peace, a time where your hearts are being settled and where God is clearly speaking uh, to you. Um, and so thank you for the positive encouragement today regarding that. Um, can I also just say that if for some of you you would like me to uh, come and visit you now, um, uh, what I can now do is I can come uh, physically into your garden, for example, and with social distancing um, uh, we can chat. So uh, obviously on, on a day that's uh, better than, than today, um, but if you would like that, um, please get in touch and I'd be more than happy uh, to call over um, at a time that suits you uh, and we can sit and chat uh, and uh, I have the opportunity to pray with you. Um, also, uh, two other announcements. One this Sunday coming uh, is Father's Day and our service is going to be a wee bit different because we're going to have our children with us, um, which is great. Uh, great opportunity to have them very much taking part in our time of worship together. And the other thing, the exciting uh, news uh, also is that we've been able to secure through the council uh, the opportunity to have a drive-in service. Um, that's next Sunday evening, the 28th, at 7 p.m. at the Leisure Centre at Ballyclare. Simply, you, you drive up uh, for some time from 6.30 onwards uh, and the stewards will be able to direct you into the car park um, and from there then we're going to hold a service for an hour from about 7 o'clock to 8 um, and that's ourselves and Valley Clare Presbyterian so please uh, come along to that um, it'll be great to actually see you even though you'll be in your car um, you, it's the opportunity to, to get together uh, really for the first time uh, since the lockdown. Um, our service of Lady of Union Office begins on page 162. Blessed be our God for all time, now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory be to you, Holy Spirit, Comforter, treasure of all goodness and giver of life. Come and dwell in us. Cleanse us from all sin, and in your love bring us to salvation. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and mortal, have mercy on us. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 37, and we're commencing at verse 28. For the Lord loves the thing that is right and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed forever, and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not leave them in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land. And when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. 
Keep innocence and heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at last. But the sinners shall perish together, and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous come from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading this evening is from Acts chapter 5 and we're going to begin um, at verse 12. Just a bit of context for this reading. The beginning of Acts 5 is that well-known story about Ananias and Sapphira and how they have hidden things, uh, hidden possessions um, really from the work of the gospel and of God uh, and as a result um, they're now dead um, and there's great fear that has seized the whole church as a result of what has just happened and so we pick it up now at verse 12. The apostles performed many signs and wonders amongst the people and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade no one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought those who were ill into the streets and led them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem bringing those who were ill and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go and stand, in the court in the temple courts he said and tell the people all about this new life at daybreak they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people when the high priest and his associates arrived they called together the sanhedrin the full assembly of the elders of israel and sent to the jail for the apostles but on arriving at the jail the officers did not find them there so they went back and reported, We found the jail securely locked, and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, in this passage, Luke is using every available means um, to report that the early church wasn't set back by the, the betrayal of the community by Ananias and Sapphira. Even though the heart of the community had been taxed to the limit, there was no stopping the gospel. And the church forged ahead without hesitation. The apostles had faced the Sanhedrin and they had been forced to exercise the church's discipline. But the gospel was not dependent on such things. The power of God was at work to establish the church. And Luke saw this and reported it. The time was coming when the church would face even tougher problems. But the storyline of Acts is that nothing could stop the work of the Holy Spirit guiding people in the work of the gospel whatever the circumstances God was very much in control and as we look at this passage the healing power of the Holy Spirit 
works. The apostles are freed from prison. We see people come to the Lord in great numbers during that period. And it's reminded me of these last 12, 13 weeks that the church has not stopped. The church, whilst the world has stopped, the church has, in some respects, come alive again. And it's come alive in an interesting period. It's come alive in a period uh, leading from Easter into Ascension uh, and Pentecost. Periods of rebirth, periods of uh, life, periods of um, the move of the Spirit. Folks, that teaches us an awful lot uh, about what God is doing at the moment. Um, we're seeing healing uh, because we're seeing a great hope from the church being rebirthed. We're seeing opportunities that maybe were there, they were there all along for us to reach out to people with the hope of the gospel. But it's actually only been now that I feel that the, that the church, the people of God across our communities and our towns has stepped up. It's my prayer, therefore, that as we move week by week, uh, transitioning from the, the past of the, the pain and the loss and the, of, of what came as a result of coronavirus, um, that the joy that we see uh, in people as they at some point come back uh, to church, but more importantly than that, that people are coming back to God, that we're going to see more and more of that, that we're going to see a greater sense of, uh, of hope in people's lives, totally because of what they've found in Jesus Christ. Amen. going to continue now and uh, tonight we're going to use the Magnificat uh, as um, our canticle and if you are using a prayer book uh, we're going to use that number 13 which you can find on page 128, 128. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, the Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. <clears throat> as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord with all of our heart and with all our soul. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all Christian people, that they may live in love and truth. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all ministers of the church and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for peace throughout the world and for all governments. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our neighbours and for all of our friends. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for those who hate us as we pray for those who love us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for refugees and prisoners and for all who are exposed to the dangers of travel. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all sick people 
for the sorrowful and the dying. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and that the poor and hungry may receive a just share. Lord, have mercy. Let us remember our brothers and sisters who have entered into eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So let us now continue in a time of open prayer. And tonight um, we're going to use uh, one of the uh, forms of intercession tonight, one that we wouldn't use much, uh, and it's uh, intercession three, uh, which is within the service of Holy Communion. If you have a prayer book, then you can find it on page 239. If you don't, then you can actually look it up on our website under the resources section, uh, and we'll, we'll include that there for you to follow. There's a set of uh, simple responses. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic universal church, that all may be one. Grant, Lord, that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, and in particular for our bishop designate, George, for all priests, and for all deacons. And tonight we think about uh, Alan McCracken. We pray for Alan and his wife Karen, who will be coming to us uh, over this next year. Uh, as a deacon intern uh, so that he can complete his training from the Theological College. And so we pray that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray, Lord, for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace, Lord, to do your will in all that we undertake, that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. Have compassion, Lord, on those who suffer from any grief or any trouble at this time, that they may be delivered from their distress. And so finally, Lord, we praise you for your saints who have entered their eternal joy. May we also come to share in the fullness of your kingdom. And so in a moment of uh, open prayer, wherever you are, we're going to pray for our own needs and for those of others. And I would encourage you at this time, wherever you are, to simply call out to God the names of people that are known to you this night and um, who need God's peace, his comfort in their distress, his presence in their loneliness. So let's take a moment to bring before God those known to us. For Hilary, for Molly, for Martin, for John, For Bob, for Jill and the family,
And so, gracious God, grant that the desires of your people's hearts may find favour in your sight through the intercession of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The collect for last Sunday, the first Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we pray, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Almighty, come and scatter the darkness of our hearts by the light of your presence, that we may know you, the light of the world, and the one true God, blessed this night and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless us and keep us. Amen.